the Rikishi Fatu Off the Top Podcast. Let's go. Rikishi Fatu, all y'all ready? We the ones. It's 2024. Keep it locked on the Rikishi Fatu Podcast. Off the top. We gon' talk about everything. Everything wrestling, everything hip-hop. Keep it locked. It's time to smarten up. All right, I want to welcome everyone to another episode of the Rikishi Fatu Off the Top Podcast. Big shout out to uh, Knoxborough Entertainment for uh, being one of my uh, main sponsors here. Here in Los Angeles, California. I'm actually out here in uh, Van Nuys. So if you hear any planes that's flying by, uh, don't worry. It, it, it's not the rock stopping by. <laughs> But uh, anyhow, I wanted to, you know, tap on to uh, finish up well, what I was talking about from the last episode. You know, uh, uh, I like to talk about things in professional wrestling, uh, what's hot out there, what's what's the news, and, you know, uh, you know what's what's been happening. So here on uh, Instagram, WWE on Fox, you know, they posted up a few things out here, which was very interesting to me. You know, they posted up a, a, a few things like um, female superstar of the year. Now, I'm going to give you the names here and, you know, please feel free to comment up underneath there and, you know, leave your comments and so forth. But, you know, I just wanted to give you my input. You know, not that I'm not a, you know, WWE Hall of Famer guy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, female superstar of the year. Uh, number one, uh, Rhea Ripley. Number two, EO Sky. Number three, Becky Lynch, was one of my favorites. And number four, Bianca Blair. That's a, you know, I'm going to be honest, I don't know who EO uh, Sky is. I'm sure, obviously, uh, she's great, she's good, she's talented uh, to even be considered on this list here. Um, you know, but the three here, man, it's a kind of a hard pick, but, you know, with, uh, Ripley and, uh, Lynch and, uh, Blair and, uh, you know, what they're all talented in their own right. I think, uh, uh, every, uh, all of them three, um, are all, uh, you know, very, very athletic, very, very, uh, good, uh, female professional wrestlers. Uh, all champions in their own right. Um, but you know what? Uh, I'd, I'd have to go with uh, uh, one of my personal favorites is Becky Lynch. Um, Becky Lynch just, you know, uh, to me, she's, uh, she's one of those chicks that, uh, you know, that can pretty much do it all there. You know, she's, uh, I, I think she's been there the longest out of, uh, you know, the crew here. And so, um, you know, she's, uh, she's, been, she's been in the game for a minute. I loved her, her, uh, her psychology and, you know, the way she, she works in the ring, the way she, uh, you know, with her promos and so forth. And so, you know, for the time being, you know, I'd have to say that she's uh, one of my favorites. Not to, not to say that I don't, like, uh, you know, uh, Rhea Ripley, I think she's fabulous. She's great. You know, Bianca, man, she's fabulous. She is great as well. You know, so what, what I would probably like to see, you know, for the belt, I'm, uh, Ripley has a belt. Now, I would probably like to see for the for the women's division, man, I really would like to see, like, these three in a cage match. You know, that's just Kishi. There's maybe something like a hell in a cell, you know? And just you know, any any anything goes, anything goes, blood, sweats, and tears, you know, just to show like all these females are beautiful, outstanding, but just to show the, you know, that the females in professional wrestling too can just get down just as good as the men do, you know, and you know I'm so happy that now that you know with the WWE now they open up this. Uh, opportunity for a lot of the females out there to, to have the, the light shine on them. You know, I know that, uh, you know, a lot of uh, female workers back in the day, you, you really didn't, 
they really didn't have too much light, you know, being shined on the on the women. You know what they have now: the women's battle, women's battle royal, women's royal rumble. So that's a you know that's a good thing to to know that there's a lot of uh, the business has changed for women, and it's a good opportunity for all of you that are training in professional wrestling, the females. You know, uh, you can uh, rest assured if uh, you have talent, uh, you love the business, and you're passionate about it that there's opportunities for you out there. Okay, so moving on to the, let's go with the tag team of the year. Tag team of the year. Wow, they got uh, Owens and Sami Zayn. Okay. And number two is the Priest and Balor. Okay. And then you have the Usos. I'm happy to see them there. I would have been hot if I didn't see them on the list. And then you have uh, uh, Neven in green. And I don't even know who that is. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, uh, you know, I'm not knocking these boys, but how, how did they make the list of tag team of the year when you don't even really see them on TV that much? I mean, who's, who's writing this stuff here? Who puts this stuff up like, you know, like, like who made the decision of which tag team gets to go into that list. There's so much other tag teams out there. But hey, and like I said, I'm just reading this off of WWE on Fox. All right, so you know what? Uh, hey, uh, Owens and Sami Zayn was uh, definitely a, a, a great tag team, you know? And, uh, you know, to be able to, a tag team, being a tag team specialist, like, I've been in the tag team, won many of uh, titles as well with my cousin, uh, the great Samu. Big shout-out to Samu. Uh, you can follow him on his Instagram and all his social media as well. Uh, but you know what? Being a great tag team is to be able to know each other without really saying each other, anything to each other in the ring. You know, you have that instincts uh, to be able to look at each other when you're calling the spot or when you're getting ready, you know, to what they... A lot of teams do communicate, you know, and kind of yell out whatever. Or well, we never had that. We we never had to do that uh, because, uh, you know, us being together for so long, like, you know, brothers growing up in the same house. So when we were trained together and raised up like that around our uncles, by the time we got in the ring to get our own, uh, uh, to get our opportunity, you know, it was a no-brainer. You know, it was our, actually our debut match was, was a dark match. You know, I'm sure a lot of people get nervous and stuff. You're in the WWE, and this is your first, you know, match, your debut. You can. We didn't have that though. Honestly, we was already confident when we walked out the walked out the uh, came down out the curtains, and we was ready to do what we were trained to do. You know, we the, I think we we debuted in front of thirty thousand people. And the, no the noise was just in our brain and when our mind was just silent. And so the reason why I bring that up is just, you know, when you know somebody and from, you know, being together for so long, you know, it's very easy for you two to mesh together. And that's, uh, well, there's another plane flying over, don't, don't mind that. Um, yeah, so when, you, when you've been grown up and together for a while, it's very easy for you to be able to communicate and do your thing. You just, it flows like poetry and motion in the ring. And I'm assuming that's how Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn is. Best friends for a while, you know, known each other for a minute and so forth. And you can either, you know, for me being a pro wrestler and understanding, I can see the chemistry between those boys together. And so I bring that up because you know, it has to do with me picking who I felt was the tag team of the year. And then we're going to go to, you know, you got my boys on there. Now, every father, every father, you know, is always going to back up his boys. I know I do from day one-ish. I am the day one-ish, right? So, you know, the boys, again, you know, brothers, they've been through it. You know, I've seen them. 
you know, uh, break a lot of furniture in the house, in the living room, and so forth. So without communication, just looking at each other. And so, you know, I'm going to have to, uh, you know, uh, my pick for this uh, tag team of the year, I'm going to have to call it a draw. You know, and reason being is because, you know, it's 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 uh it's bigger than just putting two people together. You know, when uh, it, the win for me is to be able to see, you know, a pair like Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, you know, in a way, you know, brothers from another mother. But to be able to, you know, finally come to the WWE and, you know, one time there was kids, you know, fans as well, and to be able to conquer the, you know, the tag team belts, you know, it's a big accomplishment. And it's even bigger when you're doing it with somebody you love. And so that's my pick for the uh, tag team uh, of the year. And it's a draw to me with the Usos and Kevin Owens and uh, and Sami Zayn. And so, uh, um, you know, a lot of people ask me about, you know, when I post up on my Instagrams and stuff, you know, I didn't know about you can add music onto it until my young boy, uh, Samson, uh, kind of showed me how to do all that stuff. So I, I do handle a lot of my my Instagram stuff, right? But my other stuff, Facebook and all that, other social media to access stuff. I don't I don't mess with that too much. And so I start posting up, you know, if you can hear, you know, I'm always posting up like, you know, a lot of hip hop music. You know, I was born and raised up in the Bay Area, the streets of San Francisco. And so hip hop was a part of my life. You know, I used to dance out there back in the uh, Fisherman Wharf on the Pier 39. I used to strut pop locking. That's another story we'll come to. But yeah, so my love for hip hop has always been there. And so, you know, before I uh, I end up uh, in this uh, episode, you know, I just want to throw out a couple of my three favorites in the hip hop world. And um, I got a little bit behind, you know, why. Well, n- number one would be Tupac. He's one of my all-time favorites, and a lot of these guys here that who I'm going to mention, we used to travel together, and uh, you know, uh, I mean, we used to play their cassettes. We had cassettes, not CDs, cassettes back in the day. Uh, and we travel with their music in the car, going from town to town to wrestling. So it would be uh, Tupac, and then I'd have to go with Scarface. Shout out to Houston, Scarface. And then, of course, uh, one of my favorites, all-time favorites, is Ice Cube. So if you look at these three, you know, these three uh, artists, legends in hip-hop, you know, for me was just the storytelling uh, that they used to have into their music. You know, a lot of times, you know, you, you have different, you know, different songs from their albums and so forth. That you know, when you're riding late at night, you know, finish the finish the show and your main event, you get out by twelve midnight. You're driving two, three hours to the next town, and you just pop in some of those greats, man. And it's almost like you know, you're listening to them, and you start just you know, your brain just start thinking about a lot of stuff. Like as it's a it's it's almost as if they were singing and knowing what I was going through while I'm riding late at night, you know, people sleeping at the midnight or one in the morning, and here you are, you know, Kichi got to get to the next town. And so, you know, it really, you know, these artists here really was a part of my life as far as, uh, you know, traveling back in the day, you know, it had a lot to do with, you know, sometimes I just didn't feel like doing this shit, you know? Hard, you know, just didn't want to be out there and you'd be cold, snowing, blizzard sometimes it's too hot just a desert out there and you know when i'm listening to these these uh, cats here you know with their albums and so forth it really helped me get through a lot of it so you know i'm, I'm not a hip-hop artist all i know is my heart i love hip-hop 
I'm a big fan of, you know, if I could have made it to the 50th Hip Hop Awards here in L.A., you can bet your ass Kishi would have been out there and I, I would have been probably a mark and just want to ask for some autographs and so forth from some of these greats, you know, like LL Cool J, uh, Dougie Fresh, uh, you know, uh, Grandmaster, uh, and the Furious Five, you know what I mean, back in the day. So, but, uh, yeah, so I hopefully, you know, hopefully if you, if, uh, you know, ever uh, a time to where I, I meet some of my favorite cats. So obviously, I'll never meet Tupac, you know, rest in peace of Tupac and so forth. But guys like Scarface and Q, man, hmm, we might have to do something together, man, get something going for a minute. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not saying I'm a pro at it, but I damn sure will try. All right. Well, listen there. This is another episode of the Rikishi Fight 2 off the top podcast you make sure you subscribe keep it locked on the next time and make sure you understand and you remember this that is free to be kind to one another you want to bring awareness to your business all you got to do is hit the link below and then guess what rikishi fought two off the top podcast will be promoting you it's time to smarten up It's time to say things that people are scared to say. It's time to bring you on into my home so you know what time it is. In the locker room, in the hip-hop world, in the wrestling world. You might even come into my kitchen.